Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I am giving you a sneak peek at the goal setting inserts that I've been working on. I've had a lot of you that have asked when I would be releasing them. I used them for a couple of months because I wanted to make sure I didn't want to make any changes, which I did want to make some changes. So I'll kind of show you how I've been using them and what the final result is going to be. Now I will only be listing them initially in personal size because that's the first size I did because that's the size of my planner. Um, <laughs> but I am going to be working on other sizes as well. It'll just take me a little bit of time to get to the bigger sizes. So that being said, let me kind of show you where I've started out. So you'll notice I am in my Vanderspeck custom planner and <laughs> um, I was using the Vanderspeck Parm, which was the touch me leather, but I don't know. I just was feeling something a little bit in a darker leather and I haven't used this in a while and I figured it was time. So other than that, pretty much the setup is just the same. I'll walk you through um, that. I think I may have rearranged a few things. So the way that I have the gold planner set up right now, there are a few differences. I didn't have everything exactly the same. So I noticed I didn't have a spot for the year, so I did add that over here. Um, I put this year's focus instead of just focus. I added some more extra lines for major events. And I did change the number of annual goals from 10 to eight. Now the main reason I did that, and unfortunately I don't have my copy yet of my power sheets for 2020. Uh, <laughs> long story short, I thought they were gonna be shipped earlier than they were because I was able to pre-order as an affiliate. And so I sent them to Texas where I was going to be for the next week and a half. They didn't ship till the day that I left. So they're currently in Texas right now with my husband. Thankfully, he's coming out next week and he's bringing them with him. So I will get to um, flip through them in person. But until then, I've been relying on reviews and flip throughs online. So thankfully, I was able to make some changes so I could get these out. So they one of their big changes is that they've moved from 10 goals to eight. So I reflected that in my goal setting inserts. Now, you may, if you've watched my videos before and seen these, know that these are loosely based on the Momentum Planner. So for me, this is kind of the portable version, smooshing together the Power Sheets and the Momentum Planner. So I have some elements from both kind of put in. So back to really quick how I'm using them currently. So I transferred my annual goals forward from my Power Sheets, which I had only eight anyway, so taking two off wasn't that big of a deal. I did start filling these in probably quarter three, so I don't have anything really for one and two. Um, and then I didn't bother filling in the major events because at that point in time, it really didn't make a whole lot of difference. So I have quarter four here. So I transferred forward my annual goals. I transferred forward my quarterly objectives, made notes of major events, and then now I'm starting to plan each month. So I'm actually, it's tail end of October right now, so I'm getting ready to do my November planning. Um, I'll probably do that either this afternoon or tomorrow. And then that's when I'll fill in the monthly objectives. And then down here, when I finish the quarter, I have a spot for top wins and then what to improve. So that is going to be something I won't fill out quite yet. After this, I then have the October monthly page, which I'll put this out so you can see better, transferring forward again the quarterly objectives and transferring forward the monthly objectives. So those came from the section here. A spot again for major events and then a spot for each of the weeks. So this allows me to kind of funnel everything down. So I'm starting out with annual goals kind of here a bigger level. And then as I get further and further or narrower and narrower in scope, I um, take things from big goals down to small tasks. So week level, these are generally like tasks that I want to do that accomplish these annual goals. And I'll talk a little bit later about kind of how I break all of that down. But this is kind of where I'm tracking everything. And then from the monthly pages, I then have a weekly section. So this is where I have Monthly objectives again written in, weekly objectives transferred from here, major events for that week. If I have any deadlines, I make a note there and then I have each day. 
So these I either leave here, but most of the time I'm transferring them forward to my daily page so that I'm only really looking at this on a daily basis. So that's kind of how they're set up, how they're used. And I'm going to have these in two different formats, which is why it's gonna take me slightly longer to get these generated because I have to like export them in various different ways. So the first way is what I call interleaved, which means this, this is, sorry, the fan's on. <laughs> so this is the first half of the year. So this is your annual overview. You have quarter one, January, and your weeks, and then you have five weeks. Now, if that month only has four weeks, you just take one page out. So it's not that big of a deal. So that way you don't have an extra page floating around. Just take out one of the middle pages. So these are meant to be printed double-sided. So if you kind of want everything all in one go, you're gonna have it all in one section, you're going to want to buy the interleaved version. So from January, we move forward to February. You'll see on the monthly pages, I've added a monthly focus. We have the weeks again. And then March. And then more weeks. And then we have quarter two. I probably should have put these in. <laughs> A personal sized binder, but uh, hole punching didn't feel like doing it. So essentially quarter two looks exactly the same. We have April, which is the first month of the quarter, and then all of the weeks. May, and then all of the weeks. June, and then all of the weekly pages. So I am going to have the interleaved version just because of file size constraints. Granted, I need to double check the file size. I believe there's going to be two files included with that listing, quarter one, quarter two. So you'll have the entire year. Everything is undated. So you purchase it once, you fill in your own year, and then you're off to the races and you're good to go for the rest of the year. So that is the interleaved version. The other version that I have is going to have a bunch of different files inside. Um, and I need to figure out how to do this. I'm only allowed five files, but I'm going to have a double-sided version and a single-sided version. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because of this. Um, if you want, like I had started to do here, let me see if I can find it. So where I have my months, I had the monthly pages from the monthly insert on my shop, and then I had the month here. Now, if everything was double-sided, it would be a lot more difficult to do this. So that's why I wanted to have a single-sided version. So if you wanted to insert the various types of the months in one section, the weeks in another, the quarterly annual pages in a different section, you could. And you could perhaps, even if you wanted to, put your quarterly pages in here with October. Um, that gives you a little more flexibility because I'm only, I, I can zip file them, that'll work. So, sorry, I'm working this out, <laughs> how to list these as I go. All right, so this is kind of what the non-interleaved version will look like. We will have a section that's your annual overview and then your quarters. So this will be the double-sided version. So if you wanted to have kind of your year and, and quarterly stuff in one section, you could do that. And then this is how I use this in my planner. I have the weeks tucked in a section and they're just all the weeks in one place. So there's that section. Again, the double-sided version. And then I mentioned if you wanted to have things single-sided, I'll have that option as well. So you'll have January, February, March. So each one of these will be available as a double-sided version and as a single-sided version. So that way, if you want to arrange these differently from having it all in one section, you can do that. I wanted to give a little bit of flexibility as far as 
how people want to use these, what parts they want to use. Maybe you only want to use the annual and quarterly stuff and you have your own place for your monthly. And maybe you use weekly inserts already so you don't need the weekly pages. I wanted to make sure that everyone had the fat flexibility. Now because of how these are segregated, I guess, as far as things go, if you have your own weekly inserts, you could potentially just use this page. So then you have your monthly objectives, your weekly objectives, major events and deadlines, and then you just tuck these in with each week. So that is an option as well. You don't have to use that page specifically. Same thing for the monthly pages. Let's say you don't really need to separate out the weeks. That's unnecessary for you. You can just use the January page. So there's a couple of different ways that you can use the inserts, which the more I think about it, the more flexible they actually are. It's kind of up to you. And yes, my fan is on and that's why papers are blowing around. Okay, but it's too hot. Um, it's October in Southern California. And so we're in the middle of St. Anna's right now. So even though it's technically fall, it's 88 degrees outside today, mm, probably more, it feels hotter, but it says 87, but it's a little toasty in here. So that's why the fan is on. So that's kind of how they are put together and the different ways that you can use them. So I want now to kind of go over how you put things together and how you use these and what to use them in conjunction with. All right, so if you've watched my channel before, this probably looks familiar. This is the 2019 version of the Power Sheets. So I usually do a lot of my prep work in here as far as figuring out what I have going on for the month, what time I'm going to have to work on things, and that's based on appointments I have, uh, maybe new projects that have come up, travel I'm doing, all of that sort of thing. And one thing I did want to point out, kind of as we go through it, this is one thing I wanted to show, is you'll notice that there's only five annual or eight annual goals, but then it, you narrow it down to five objectives, whether that's in the quarter or whether that's in the month or whether that is in the week. So essentially, you're going to have more than five things that you're working on, and that's just a given. I mean, we're all fairly busy. Now, it's up to you, depending on what is going on in your life, whether you're using this maybe all for work and you don't count personal stuff. Personally, I think you should consider both because we're all whole people and we don't just work or just be at home. Um, but it really depends kind of on how you're using them, and I want to acknowledge that. But most of the time, you want to at least be sort of balanced. So maybe you have three work projects, two home projects, um, or vice versa, three home, two work. By work, I mean either economic work, so like your day job, if you want to call it that, or it could just be things that you're doing as a part-time job. It could be the work that you're doing around the house. It really depends on what your season of life is and what you consider work versus personal. Um, for some people, work might be part of their hobbies. That's really kind of up to you. But just know that when I say work, I am encompassing all of those things. So let me pull up. Let's see, we are in October. So this is my tending list. Now each quarter, the power sheets actually have you revise your goals. And let me see. And you'll probably have to, <laughs> hopefully everything is coming through okay. I have a brand new camera. And so I am, this is the first time doing anything on it aside from taking a few pictures of Emma. So this is a bit of a, experiment. Let's hope, I'm hoping this goes well because um, I've gone to, as I jokingly call it, the dark side because I've switched from Nikon to Canon. So <laughs> still figuring everything out. All right, back to what I was talking about though. So these are my most recent set of goals. So these goals here, 
are what show up on my annual overview. Now, you revise things each quarter in the power sheets. So you might set your annual goals at the beginning of the year, but say something happens mid-year and you need to change your goals. You still have the opportunity to do that on these inserts. You don't have to transfer your annual goals forward. Maybe you complete goal number one in January. So then you come up with a new goal to take its place. Maybe you have a whole, maybe you have 12 goals that you might want to accomplish, but you narrow it down to the eight most important ones. You finish goal one, yay, you get to bring in one of your extra goals, one of the ones that's kind of sitting in its own little parking lot. So essentially, if you have more than this list, that's okay. Just find a place to keep those so that you have kind of a backup list, I guess. Um, or things that aren't, you've prioritized them, and so maybe that's not as important. Maybe you know it's coming up later in the year. Maybe it's a timing thing. Just take all of that into account, and when you get to your next quarter, go ahead and revise it. Same thing with your quarterly objectives. Maybe you had your quarter one objectives. You finished something early that you didn't think you were going to, Maybe you have an extra quarterly objective. Maybe you can bump something up that you were anticipating in quarter two. So each time you can actually revise those. So they don't have to be exactly the same each way across. I did want to point that out. All right, so this is generally what gets transferred to my annual goal section, at least at the beginning of the year. They have you do a goal refresh each quarter. So you'll see there's one for spring. There's my spring ones, one for summer, there's my whoop, summer goals, and then here are my fall goals. There isn't a tab for winter, but that's because winter time is when you're doing your next round. So essentially in your new power sheets, you have a goals tab up top, and this is your winter goals, if you want to call it that. So just as a side note as to why there's not a winter tab here behind December or something. That's when you're working on next year's stuff. So there is this information here. Now, she has you break it straight down into your monthly items. I find it useful to come through and break things down by quarter. And maybe it's because I know I'm not going to start working on a specific goal until a specific quarter. At the beginning of the year, one of my annual goals was to revise lease renewals. Lease renewals happen at the end of quarter two. Like I'm not going to be working on that in quarter one. So that's why it's okay that I only have five quarterly objectives. I'm picking the ones that either make sense as far as timing goes, that are more important, things that I have information for, because one of my other work goals was to revise our workflows and manuals for the company. I didn't have that information at the beginning of the year. I'm actually now working on, on that in quarter three and quarter four. So again, when you have more objectives or goals or projects than you have space for, that gives you the opportunity to prioritize. And then as you accomplish one, you bump it and move something else into its place. All right, so for me on this tending list, that is what I would be writing in here on the monthly pages. So again, I bring my quarterly objectives forward, monthly objectives. That would kind of be these monthly action items. For me, these are month long projects. And then from there, I break things down into weeks. So let me actually pull my, one of my lists here. Sometimes it's easier to see rather than just talking about it in random objective. Now I'm hoping that most of this I'll be able to show. I'll try and blur out individual lines if there's things that I can't show rather than the whole page so you kind of get the benefit of it. So I've talked about my annual goals already. Um, just for the sake of being able to see them better, I'll put them here, make, might make them easier to read. So establishing habits that support a healthy life, for me, that was focusing on self-care in quarter three. Um, creating a home that fosters rest and connection, I worked on that quarter three by decluttering home and office. I got my office decluttered, so quarter four, I'm focusing on my home. 
love others better. I don't really have anything necessarily at the quarterly level. A lot of these things are recurring tasks that I'm making sure that I keep doing, um, especially considering that my husband's in a different state, that sort of thing. So I don't really have a major project associated with that. So you can skip levels. Like I could go from annual to monthly. I don't necessarily have to make it a quarterly objective. Sometimes it's easier because that way you're breaking things down. The comprehensive financial review and update goals, that actually got more completed beginning of the year. The last thing I needed to do was review my will and trust and that sort of thing and I actually finished that in quarter three. Updating policies, procedures, and docs, and then revamping lease renewals. Lease renewals are here. Quarter two and three are the major push for that. I have little bits every other month and every other quarter, but this is the major push for those. So now I'm focusing on updating policies and procedures. Growing side hustle and community. So that's this YouTube channel. That's my Etsy store. So that's where this add content to KB, uh, which is my abbreviation for my channel name. That's where that comes into play. So making sure I'm putting out videos, making sure I'm updating and creating new inserts for you. Fulfilling volunteer obligations and providing expertise. So quarter three is kind of a downtime for the uh, Rental Housing Association. However, quarter four, I found out I was going to be, well actually I guess tail into quarter three, I found out next year I'll actually be president. So I'm ramping up for that. So that's where this comes into play. Uh, deepening my relationship with a God. Again, this is more of a habit formation sort of thing. Daily quiet time, making sure I'm going to church. All right. So looking at the quarterly pages, I've transferred forward the annual goals. So my quarterly objectives, I did change slightly when I brought them forward, um, mostly because I had started writing these before I remembered I'd put them here. But remember, I also had a note to myself about not to pre-plan quarters, and this would be why. So I do have company coming for the holidays and I'm going to be in and out of town quite a bit. So I wanna make sure that I'm as prepared as I can be for the holidays. Um, this is the same prepping to be president, decluttering home. Actually, I do have prep for holidays. I just have it in a different order. And then updating policies, procedures, and manuals. So those got brought forward. I made a list of all the major events I have going on this quarter. And then I started on my monthly objectives. So listing the rest of the year for daily inserts and monthlies, that's part of adding content to my Etsy store, which actually I have done. So I can cross that off. Review and update four manuals or workflows. I actually have done that as well. Uh, read and review or I'm sorry, read books and articles to prep for presidency that I have not done and I have a week. Uh, declutter at home. So this is kind of an ongoing thing. And actually last night I have so much just paper and stuff because I, um, with Coco Daisy and some other things and just old planners, stuff that was either given to me or that I used part of but not fully, I actually went through and cleaned a lot of that out. So that created a little more room in my craft room. I'm not going to say I have a ton of room in there, but I can at least scoot my chair back now <laughs> from my desk, even though I have a bunch of stuff in my chair. It's a work in progress. That room is the worst because it's kind of the dumping ground at the moment. But anyway, I digress. Um, and then making holiday prep lists and starting on them. So I've kind of sort of started that, but I actually need to sit down and do some more thoughtful work. So you can see how the October monthly objectives tie to the quarterly objectives. And this, these are projects to move these forward. So at each level, you're narrowing it down a little and thinking, how can I move my annual goals forward? All right. So then we get into October and I transferred forward my quarterly objectives, and my monthly objectives. So you can see I've checked things off. Uh, again, I have major events, so I know what's going on. And then I've broken things down even further. So I have listing October inserts in quarter four, um, making a list and choosing what manuals and workflows I wanna update. They're kind of in several different places. So I needed to review and see what's not been updated for the longest period of time. And I'm starting with those. Um, I wanted to read one book, which I already have two books set aside. I did not do that. 
should have, still need to, um, and decluttering one area, which I did do. Starting my holiday prep list, and I'm thinking about creating a holiday um, insert. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. It would be kind of like the rest of my inserts. Pretty generic, and I don't use a lot of what other um, like Etsy stores and other people put out. Let's just be honest, I'm not going to make a giant list of who I'm sending Christmas cards to. I usually have all of my addresses and stuff on my computer, and if anything, I'm going to tag their name in um, the, I use contacts in on my Mac. I'm just gonna put a Christmas card tag on there. So I search for Christmas cards, the names pop up, I address my cards when I send them out. I'll be honest about that. Um, and then I'm done. So I don't need to write that down. Mostly what I need are like gift ideas, ways to track what I've ordered online to make sure I've received it. Um, I kind of sort of do budgeting. So I'll probably have a budget section in there. Because I have calendars elsewhere, I don't know that I'll necessarily have a calendar part portion to it. Though I might have like a page where um, it's just like one to 31. And you can either keep calendar sorts of items on there so you can keep track of what all's going on related to the holidays. Maybe it's like your memory for the day or your gratitude for the day. So it'd be kind of multi-purpose. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So if you're interested, please let me know down in the comments and I'll actually work on trying to get those listed probably a week or two into um, November. Probably would work on them when I'm back in Texas the next time. Anyway, so this was a day when I was in Dallas. I actually didn't really do any planning that week because I was mostly doing a lot of executing. Um, so this is when I returned. So I do put things on here that are kind of major things that take a lot of time, um, but not, aren't necessarily moving stuff forward. So like processing payroll takes me like half a day by the time I'm doing all the calculations and everything. So. That's why I put that on here. Emailing the CPA, this has been on my to-do list for quite a while. Um, listing goal inserts, which is kind of what I'm working on now. I didn't get around to that because this week, <laughs> I've told several people uh, when I ran into them, my interruptions had interruptions. Like I would look up and it, five hours would have gone by and I was like, what was I working on? Because I was working on something. And my desk looked like a paper factory had exploded. It was it was pretty nuts last week. Um, this week was slightly better. So I'm actually going to be cleaning house this weekend. Sending out three day and 60 day notices, rent increases and lease renewals, which I actually forgot to do these. So I'll circle those because I need to bring those forward. Um, I'm still working on goal inserts, so like I have additional sizes, but that's gonna get bumped. Updating the maintenance bonus policy. This actually got canceled. Because I got asked to audit some HR stuff. And then part of my duties as the incoming president is to help coordinate uh, committee chairs for next year. So I had to call chairs this um, last week and get that taken care of because I had a deadline of Friday. So sometimes what I'm doing in a week moves my goals forward. Sometimes, as you can see, especially this week, I'm not working on goals necessarily and that's okay. Maybe I've had a big project that came up out of the blue that I need to work on. As long as I'm making progress on goals one or two weeks out of the month, I feel okay and I'm making progress. And so I wanted to make sure as you're working on your stuff that you kind of get that permission to. You don't have to push a goal forward every single week. You just have to make a little bit of progress. And as long as you're doing that once a month, I, you, you might actually get through. You have 12 months each, each year. So maybe one month you're pushing forward more on one goal than another, and that's okay. All right, so breaking down weeks. Oops, the fan strikes again. So cleaning house, you'll see I have that on the weekend. Sending out notices, I have that divided up between these two days. 
goal inserts. Um, I had that on Wednesday. The HR audit, that's what got put here on Friday. It's one of those projects that it's not difficult, it's just a giant pain and I hate working on it. So I have to do one year's worth and it's annoying. Uh, let's see. And calling potential chairs, that got divided up pretty much throughout the week. So I made a group of calls Monday and Tuesday, and then I finished up Thursday and Friday. Some of them ended up being emails, but I just needed to reach out. So you can see kind of how this got distributed out and then I filled in. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I did want to point it out again. You'll see that I have like horizontal lines through some of the numbers. So these are actually not tasks, but events. And so if it's something that actually is going to take um, an hour to two or more, I actually will write it down because to me, that's actually time for me to be working on something that I now no longer have because I have an appointment. So like Monday, I had three meetings. So you can see, I really didn't have a lot of time to work on anything. So that's why I only put down two items on here. Tuesday, I had two meetings. So I had room for three. Wednesday, I had three items. And actually because of how these were spaced out, I really didn't have a lot of time on Wednesday. I was home for like 45 minutes and then I had to leave again. So they were just spaced out, just far enough apart. By the time I drove, drove home, got home, 45 minutes, and then I had to leave again. It was nuts. So that's why these two things I am now working on on Saturday, just because I didn't have time. Um, and then Thursday, I only one item, so or one appointment. So that gave me time to work on more things. Friday, I had none, no appointments. It was nice. So honestly... Um, actually this was something I thought these two things I'd originally written down before I knew had that. So the pay revisions, this was the HR project. So that was what I spent most of Friday working on. I didn't really get my office cleaned or filed because I spent all day working on that. So that's how I break things down from the annual goals all the way down to like daily stuff. I'm looking at what my objectives are for like the higher level and thinking, what do I need to do to move that forward? So that's how everything gets broken down. So that's how I get these power sheets into a daily task. And I do find this tending sheet to be good because like I said, there are some things that are not necessarily a monthly action item, but it's more of a daily um, habit or something that I need to work on. So like quiet time and prayer or you know, following a meal plan doing like house care tasks, doing housework, um, or so maybe it's something I'm doing once a week. So decluttering something or going grocery shopping and meal prepping, just making sure that these items, which don't necessarily go on the goal setting sheets because they're not um, a big enough task. Like these are stuff I, these are things I do every single day. These might get put in as a to-do item, but they go in on a daily page. I just schedule it in. But knowing that these are what I'm doing to push larger goals forward, in addition to the things I have on the goal setting checklists, that's why I find this is still helpful to me to work through that. So anyway, I'm hoping that was helpful. I know it was a lot of information, but I did have a few people that asked what to do with the things that they're not working on right now. And actually, let me kind of show you what I'm doing with that. Um, I'll show you the house version just because otherwise I'm gonna end up having to blur it all out. So for projects that I'm working on, and maybe these are like, you're only allowed five. So there are some things that I'm not working on actively in a given month or a given week. So I actually have a page in here for each project that I am working on. And if I had a lot of things that were just kind of waiting in the wings, I might actually have a separate just project page. So that's an option. Um, that's just a list of things that you're not working on now that but you want to get around to someday. David Allen calls that the someday maybe list. So 
perhaps you have a someday maybe list. For me, if it's a project I'm working on, I'm trying to have a page per project. So as I think of things that I want to do um, related to that, I can go ahead and write it down. And then I can come back in here and look and see what do I want to work on, whether it's like a one-off task or is it something related to a project. Now I will say for work, <laughs> I go back and forth and people ask me why I'm in a planner, why I'm electronic. It really depends on how much I have going on. I was finding that I was having a hard time keeping a paper version of all of my work tasks up to date right now. I have a lot of things that are going on and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. And I need something that's a little more in my face because sometimes I open the door to the office and I just kind of get mobbed. So this doesn't make an appearance out of my purse for a couple of hours. So I've moved back into doing a lot of things out of OmniFocus, and I think that's also because I'm getting a lot of tasks via email. And instead of having to type out each task in OmniFocus or write it in here, I can just forward the email and it shows up as a task. And then I don't have to remember, did I write this down someplace? What's in my pending folder, my pending email folder? I, I guess it's a pending folder in my email because not all of it's things that need an email back but that pending folder has gotten very unwieldy and it had gotten to a point where I wasn't sure if everything had been recorded as something I needed to do someplace else aside from that folder in my email inbox. And just my personal preference, I don't like working out of my email as a to-do list. And that's mainly because I kind of get that ooh shiny syndrome. I'm like, oh, I really need to work on this task. Oh, look at this email. I'd prefer to answer that one right now even though maybe it's not the most important thing or it's not the thing that would benefit myself or the company most for dealing with it. It might be easier, I might be procrastinating, I might hate the thing that I really should be doing and so I, I get distracted. So I'd rather eliminate that and just be nice to my future self and so I try and pre-schedule my days in OmniFocus as far as tasks that I need to do and my recurring tasks show up there and everything also. So I haven't used OmniFocus ironically most of the summer but I think it's because I was had a lot to do but it was a lot of the same thing so it wasn't as if I had a lot of small tasks I had a couple large projects that I was working on that was they were pretty much all consuming. So now that I'm kind of back to having to deal with a lot of things coming at me from external, that's why I'm needing to use OmniFocus. I have four refis going on right now for various owners. And so the things that they're asking for, the information they want, um, all of that I'm having to kind of keep an eye on. What am I doing versus somebody else? <sighs> and everybody gets cc'd on the emails i'm sure you know how that goes you're like is this really for me or is this for somebody else and so having to determine what that is and then make sure that i record what my part is in my to-do list that's i think where i get the most benefit because otherwise if i just use that email as a to-do item i have to reread the email chain to figure out what part's mine so there might be a list of 14 things number three is mine or worse, number 14 is mine. So I'm reading all 14 items every single time as opposed to forwarding the email to OmniFocus, changing the subject line to please send item number 14, whatever that might be, to whoever it needs to go to. And then that I just know that's all I have to do. So that's a tip for you. If you get a lot of things you need to do from external sources, that actually might be one better way to handle your to-do list and that sort of thing is by making sure that you're recording that. So hopefully that helps somebody out there. Um, and I go through phases. Sometimes, like I said, I can handle it all in my, the paper planner. Other times I really need to have that hybrid. So I'm moving into that time in the year and of season of life or whatever where I need a hybrid solution. So that's where I'm headed. I will still probably keep a project section in here for work, I'm thinking. I don't know. I think the downfall for OmniFocus is sometimes the projects for me are out of sight, out of mind, and I actually will probably need to revise how those are set up. So maybe it won't be as bad, um, but I'm kind of working on how I set up the system in OmniFocus like two or three years ago, 
and I've made a few little tweaks, but I have an idea of how I want to make it kind of reflect these goal setting um, sheets a little bit. So you may be seeing an OmniFocus video from me at some point in the future. If I figure something out that's interesting and think that it would be helpful for somebody else. Um, again, along with the holiday inserts, if you want to see that, if you use OmniFocus and you want to see how I set it up, just let me know. Um, and I'll film something to show you kind of how I have, how I have that set up. So I think I'm going to wrap this up now so I can get it edited and posted and get the inserts out. Um, cause I'm sure a lot of you are wanting based on the comments, a lot of you are wanting to, um, get your hands on a copy. So like I said, the personal size will be what's out first. There's the two different versions. There's the interleaved version, and then there is the single or double sided version. Um, so you can have your choice of which way that you want it. Cause some people may want to have, um, if you have like three or four planners and you just want one for goal planning or goal setting, you can grab the interleaved version and just, you know, whatever size planner you're wanting and just have a goal planner and then everything's all in one spot. Or maybe you want to integrate what you have into the system that already exists. And so that's when that single or double sided might work better for you. Or if you have a system, but you just want a whole section, then maybe you want the interleaved. So those are kind of the situations where I'd see you want one versus the other. Um, the other thing I will probably do is put a poll, um, I think I'll probably do it on YouTube once I post this video of what sizes I should do next. So there are some sizes that are fairly popular and there are others that I get requests for, but I have like one person who wants them. So I'd rather um, put the inserts out in whatever will serve the largest group of people the fastest. So I will probably put a poll um, in the community tab. So if you're watching this video, go to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe because you'll get a lot of other information. Um, if you look a few videos back, you'll actually see what my content calendar looks like. But um, look at the community tab and you should see that poll. So you can put in your vote for what size that you would like so that I put out um, them in the correct order so that more people can get their hands on them quicker. All right, I'm going to end the video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, um, please leave them down below. I think this is the final version. I'm, I've already exported everything, so I don't think I'll be making any changes to the goal setting inserts this year. Um, but as you use them, if you have any thoughts for things that you find that might be helpful, like I said, I designed these around how I think and how I work. I always welcome hearing what people um, think I think I have an email address in my description box. You can always shoot me an email or send me a chat on Etsy. Um, and I do, um, within reason, do custom orders. So if you ever have something you're looking for but you don't see the size in my store, you want it slightly modified. For example, I have A6 in personal size, uh, the one page per day instead of the two page per day. And that's just because somebody emailed me and said, hey, can you put a one page per day uh, together for me. So it's essentially this page and this page is not there. Um, so I have a couple of one page per day listings, but if I have somebody else who says, Hey, can you do an A5? Yeah, that's pretty easy. Cause I already have the two page per day put together. So if you ever have something like that, um, that you would like to see tweaked slightly, just let me know. Um, and I can try and work it in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.